So as we get started today this video is divided into chapters. If you wanna skip at any point just look at the sliding bar underneath the plating window and you can see the chapters to skip ahead. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. This is the Let's Stripe Crochet Hat. A nice basic hat using the basic yarns of Karen Simply Soft. What I'm going to be doing today, this is a beautiful easy repeat. I'm gonna be giving you some tips that are not in this pattern today and this is a nice easy level project as I mentioned. So you'll need a four millimeter size G crochet hook in order to play and then there's a list of colors that you can see here in the pattern. There is several. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can do seven colors. You can do a mix of different colors that you have maybe in your collection but overall it's gonna be a fun day. So without further ado there's not a lot of explaining to do but we're gonna get started right away. So grab your crochet hook and let's play. So as we begin today I want you to create a little bit of a longer tail just so that you can hide that in later and create a slip knot. I also want you to keep a spare piece of yarn to the side. We're going to use that and you'll see why in a few moments. So create a slip knot and you want to chain a total of 12. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So if you're, if you're familiar with crochet just because this is a chain doesn't mean that's how long the brim will be. It'll be a little bit narrower. So let's do row number one to get ourselves started. In row number one you're going to go second chain from the hook so count it back. So one and two and go to the back hump of the chain. So it's just one strand and I want you to single crochet yourself all the way across your chain and there will be a total of 11 single crochets by the time you get there. But before you turn and go to the next row I want you to, to hold and just bear with me because we're gonna use that strand that I showed you as our key point to be able to measure later. So go to the end of the line. I'll see you in a second. So once you finish that line this is considered the right side. So just pull up a loop for me and grab a spare piece of str uh, yarn like I have and just go into some of the yarn work on this side of the project. Okay and then just grab that strand that you have and pull through. And so this is going to be what makes your hat look amazing. So just pull it through and just kind of loop it. So you can use a stitch marker if you want to. So whenever you see this side of the project it means you're on the right side and if you turn it around it's not there. That's the wrong side. So we're going to use that in the future to determine where we need to stop. So now we're going to progress to row number two and do row number two until the project is nine, 19 and a half inches slightly stretched. So let's do that. So all remaining rows are going to be exactly the same and I want you to finish on the wrong side of the work. So the last row that you will do you will crochet along and when you stop you'll be looking at it and there will not be that stitch marker. So to do this you're just gonna chain up one and in the stitch work there is two strands that make up a stitch. If you go to the first one that's closest to you that's the front loop and the second one is the back loop. I want you to stay within the back loop. So just single crochet in the back loop all the way across. So there will always be 11 single crochets just in case you think you're going off the track. Just make sure that you can always count 11. So I wouldn't count it each and every time but just trust in yourself and depending on your experience of course. So go to the end of the line and meet me back here in a moment. So we're going to the end of the line. Go right to the very last one. You should have a total of 11. I'm not gonna count it because I'm not familiar with stitching that I can trust myself. But if you don't just make sure you have 11. Turn your work and then begin to do the same thing. So just dive, chain one and then just dive into the back loop. So I want you to go and do this until it's 19 and a half inches and when you finish the last row you should be finishing on the wrong side. So if I was finishing this row as you see it this would be finishing on the right side. So you wanna finish this so it's the wrong side so the stitch marker is facing away from you. And what that's doing though it's actually allowing you to stay in balance with the ridges that will appear in the hat. So if you start on the right side which this is and you finish on the right side you'll have an imbalance in the texture. And that's something that's not in the pattern but I know that from experience. So again just turn and just single crochet in the back post or the back loop sorry. So go ahead and it's gonna be slightly stretched so grab your tape measure. And you can even try it on your head if you want to. If it's for you or somebody that you love and just being able to go across 
back and forth. So I'm going to leave the rest of the brim with you. So if I was saying that this was 19 and a half inches, this would be the side that I was finishing on because the stitch marker is facing away from you. Now due to the miracle of the internet and me doing my advanced homework, I already have one already done. So I have my brim already done, already measured, ready to go and when I finished, do you see there? I finished here and when I follow it across, the stitch marker is facing down. So that allows me to know exactly where I am. So please do that and we're going to start with um, solidifying this and doing our first round to go around. So now that I've got this one here, it's 19 and a half inches slightly stretched. So when I lay it down like this, it's less than 19 and a half. So I slightly stretch it to make it and I also tried it on my hip too. So when you're finished, you're just going to loop up and make that circle and you're going to slip stitch it to the very first one. The top of the hat is not on this side, it's actually on this side and watch what we're about to do because I'm gonna show you that's something that's not in the pattern. So people kind of balk when it comes to sewing. So here's your solution. So make sure it's nice and tight the very first time you pull through. What we're doing is that we're going to slip stitch into the first stitch on this side and pull through and through and then jump down and there's the same number of stitches. So jump down the back loop of the one and then through full stitch on the other side. And what I want to do is just slip stitch my way down. So instead of sewing, back loop, full stitch. And what we're doing is that we're getting ourselves to the other side of this. So it's completely joined and when we get there we have to just take a, a look, quick look at what we just did because we're in fact creating a seam line that you don't necessarily want on the outside of the hat and we'll be adjusting for that in just a few moments from now. So now that I came all the way across, just kind of give it a stretch, slip stitching is always tighter. So you can see it matches, right? So and you see that this is the right side anyway. So if you were literally to wear this, you would probably barely hardly tell where it is. So even if you flipped it the other way, you probably would tell this side not so much. So this is where we're going to start our journey. Do not trim this yarn yet because we need to go one revolution around to get ourselves established in the round and it's a lot easier to hide that um, with using the same color. I'll be right back. I just need to take a breath. The easiest way to do the next round, we have to get 64 single crochets evenly spaced around. The easiest way to do that is to fold it right where you joined it and fold it directly in half and use another stitch marker and put it right at the halfway point on this side. And instead of just equally spacing it and then getting partially the way around and you either run out of stitches or you get all the way around and you still have more stitches to go, you use the stitch marker as the halfway point. So putting that back on. So what I want to do is that I need to get in 32 stitches by the time I get there. And then after I get there, I get another 32 on the other side coming back. What this is doing is that it's easier for me to kind of look and say okay I'm at the 15 mark right about here. I know that I'm gonna be okay but if I was at the 15 mark and here and I still have all that way to go to get to 32 you know that you're going too quickly. And so then if you're at like maybe 25 and you're already here it means that you've been going too slow. So you just have to keep eyeing it up as you go. So the straggler that is in there, the loose end, is that you're just gonna chain one and you're gonna equally space out. So I'll do the first half with you and I haven't done it off camera yet so this is as it goes. So chain one and equally single crochet yourself across. So this is number two and I'm going right up over top of the straggler so that I can hide that in two. So this is three and four, five, six, seven, thirty-one and thirty-two. 
So I got 32 in there on the first try. So you're just kind of eyeing it up. So any imbalance or anything will straighten itself out. Okay, so you just gotta get it as close as possible. So now that I got my 32 in there, I wanna do another 32 and when I get all the way around, I wanna verify that there's actually 64 because that's the important number. So I'll, I'll leave that in your capable hands. I'll be right back in a moment. So get your other 32 in there. When you get all the way around, I've already verified that there's a total of 64. So what I want to do is then just slip stitch to the top of the first single crochet that I started with. And we're going to end this color now. So when I go to end this color in all colors that we're about to do, I'll show you the same thing and then I'll just show it once. You're gonna trim your yarn and pull through. Now if you weave it in and this is a wearable, it will pop out on you. So what I need you to do is just grab a tapestry needle, a yarn needle and put it through. We know that this is the outside. So I want you just to turn it to the inside and I want you to drag it through only the same color. So whenever you're doing color changing, always stay within the same color like that and you'll never see it. So the reason that we wanted to use the same color is that any imperfections that you had to do on the edge, you won't notice it because it's the same color. It's always one of those ones sometimes they suggest to do white and then white is very obvious if you have to skip a stitch or do something unique. So any loose ends that you have, um, I did go over top of the original. So you wanna do that. And then we're going to carry on and start at the same spot and move ourselves to the first round. So fast forwarding in the tutorial, just in case you want to know, the color sequence that you have here is the stripe pattern. So it's B, C, D, E, F, B, G, A. So you can go to the link and the more information in this video if you need that and that information is obviously referenced here but that is the actual order. From so I'm going to start off with the slip knot. So I would do the slip knot any way you want and right where you did the join is exactly where you want to start. And you're going to go in and the way that it's written is that it tells you to go in and join it. So just slip stitch to join and then you're going to chain four. So one, two, three and four. So that counted as a double crochet and a chain one space. Okay, so that's what you would want to do. So then you would have to double crochet into the same one to create that V stitch that they want. So that's the way it's written. And then it says skip the next single crochet and you'll do the V stitch in the next one. So you just skip one V stitch and then chain one and V stitch. So let's skip one, double crochet, chain one and V stitch. So that's the way that it's written. So the chain will always look obvious because it looks like it's different and it is different. So what I would do if you weren't watching me, what I would have done is this. Create a slip knot. This is called a standing double crochet. So it's creating a double crochet without starting from the bottom of the stitch. So to do that, you're just gonna wrap the hook, so just pinch it and then go into the stitch. So then you're wrapping the hook and you're pinching it. Hold that down so it's underneath the stitch and you're gonna have to use a tapestry needle. You will have to anyway regardless on how you do it. So just pull it through. Noticing that I'm still pinching and then yarn over, pull through two and yarn over, pull through two. So that actually really does truly look like a double crochet. You're going to have a tapestry needle to deal with that. So if you do it that way, that's your double crochet. Chain one is your space and then double crochet into the same one and then move around. So by the time you get all the way around, there will be 32 of these V stitches. So skip the one, double crochet in the next, chain one, double crochet. So whatever way you decide to do it is up to you and I would do it with the standing double crochet because then it looks like it actually is a double crochet instead of being a single crochet that is. Um. So that's the way I would do it if I were you and you were me. So go all the way around, you should have 32 of these V stitches. So I'm all the way back around, I only have one stitch left which is fine because I have to skip that in order to join it to the first double crochet or to the third chain of a chain four. So I want to join it with a slip stitch. So we have to end our color every time we come around to the end as per the pattern. 
So we have to slip stitch and the color and then start a new one right in the chain two or chain one space. If you decided that you don't wanna change the color, all you just need to do is slip stitch yourself to the next space and then that's where you're going to begin the next one and then you'll chain your four and then double crochet back in. So you have to do your chain four if you are carrying your colors but if you're starting a brand new color then you could do your standing double crochet. So I'm going to follow what this pattern is suggesting and so it says to finish the yarn and because this is unique because we started with standing double we want to make sure that we have our ends woven in especially the very first one. So put this back onto a tapestry needle and stay only within the same color. So I would do it as I would go. It's just easier and it's less thought. So just turning it to the back side of the work. Just come on down and just go up and down the stitch a total of three times. So we have one and then two and three. So stay within the same one. And then your ending one that you did is that you also wanna take care of that at the same time. And you can get rid of the other stitch markers if you want to on the on the brim. We're done with that. So if it were me and I were you, I would make sure that w if you were um, deciding to change your yarns and stuff, keep within the same area on the on the hat to make sure that the seam line is pretty much close to each other instead of jumping it all over the hat. And again, I leave that to your creative spirit. So then you're gonna turn your work and then you're gonna begin your next color and you'll begin right in a chain one space. So I'll show you another color starting and let's begin. So I already showed you how to join and do a chain four and then uh, double crochet into a stitch. So I'm just gonna show you just the standing double instead. So creating where, right where the other one is. So go right into the chain one space. Okay, you could do that and then join and then chain four and then double crochet in or you can do the standing double which is what I would do. So and it looks cleaner too. So wrap the hook pinching down on the hook and pull through and then pull through two and two and then chain one and then double crochet into the same one and you'll hide that end in later. So jumping to the next chain one space, you're just gonna double crochet, chain one and double crochet. So you're just playing in these chain one spaces all the way around. So please do that and I will meet you at the end of this round and we'll talk about sizing and then I will bring you later on into the tutorial um, and have and show you how to be able to close the top of this hat. So when you get all the way back around you're just filling in all the chain one spaces and then you're back at the very beginning. So you'll slip stitch either to the first double crochet or to the third chain of the chain four if you're deciding to go that route and then just fasten off and then start all over again choosing the same chain one space and then continuing along. So you're going to continue this until you can measure a total of seven and a half inches approximately from right at the base to the next part. So the average human uh, adult head is about seven to seven and a half inches before the decrease starts at the top of the hat. So you'll notice it's a nice rounded area that's because the hat's pulling it in. So I want you to continue to do the road that I just showed you over and over and over till it's seven and a half inches and that's where I'm gonna pick you up next and then we're gonna start shaping the crown of the hat. So I got a little bit of work to do but in the meantime I'll leave that to you and I'll be back in just a few seconds from now. So we're going to move on in this tutorial. So get your seven and a half inches done and I'll be back in a second and we're gonna carry on in the tutorial to shaping the crown. So let's shape the crown and this is row round number one sorry. And we're going to begin, I'm gonna keep my color sequence going and you can do whatever you feel is appropriate. So what we need to do is that we need to V-stitch and also eliminate out V-stitches in here. So we have currently 32. We're going to eliminate out four of them. So we'll end up being down to 28 V-stitches and we're gonna be jumping right over them. So to start you're going to just uh, begin in the beginning. So you can just join or you can do your standing double crochet whatever you feel is most appropriate to you. You notice I didn't pinch because I'm good. <laughs> uh, now I've been doing all this stuff a long time so we're gonna start off with their first 
v-stitch in. So it says we wanna do our beginning v-stitch in the same space as the slip stitch, so that's where we were, and the v-stitch in the next six. So let's just count those out together. So I'll, I'll take you in the whole round here. So we'll just do the v-stitch in the next six. So we have one, and two, and then three, and four, five, and six. So you technically have seven in a row there. So with the beginning one and the next six. So do you see seven? Okay, so what we have to do at this point is that we're going to skip the next v-stitch. So you'll skip this one completely and just reach on over to the next one here. And what you're going to do, uh, to do then is that you're going to v-stitch in the next seven. So you're just gonna go on over. So just pull it. That's gonna start eliminating out those. So I need you to do this one plus another six. So there's seven in a row. Skip a, a V-stitch and seven in a row and I will be back here at the end in just a few moments. So the secret is a seven and then skip one and seven and skip one and I'll see you back here in a second. So when I get back around, see I have my seven in a row. See I skip and have seven. So you're gonna skip the very last one and just slip stitch to the first standing double or to the third chain of the beginning chain four. Eliminate the color and we're gonna begin again with another color for round number two. Let's begin the next round starting in the very first one that you did the join to. You're going to notice that this reduction is actually really quite straightforward hopefully. So you're just going to start with your standing double or chain four whatever one you decided. Chain one. There we go. Okay, so we have that one. So it says to a V stitch, the beginning of V stitch, and then do the next five in a row. So I'm just going to do the next five. The secret is, is that I'm technically looking for six. So the beginning uh, V stitch plus this, uh, plus the rest of the five gives you the number six. So last time it was seven, this time it's six. Do you understand that? So we have one less than we, we did before because we're eliminating out stitches. So I've kind of stopped counting a bit. Um, I noticed on the last round it's pretty easy once you understand where the decrease is which is when you skip a V stitch. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So then I'm gonna skip this one and immediately jump into the next V stitch and do the next six in a row and then jump and skip and etc. So please do this all the way around. This is round number two for shaping the crown. So I came all the way around. I did join it. I just did it automatically without thinking about it. So I have that joined and now I'm gonna do another color and move on to round number three. So just like it was before, we start off in the very first one and we're going to go to a certain amount. So let's just put in my standing double. And so this time, last time there was six in a row. So what do you think it's gonna be this time? If you answered me and said it was five, you get a gold star and a chocolate cookie. And if you don't like chocolate or you're allergic to it, then get something else like a wafer or a donut. <laughs> uh, round is a shape too. So we got three and then this is four. And then we got five. So this time there's only five in a row. Okay, so the beginning one and the four that gives you five. So you're gonna skip the next one and then jump on immediately to the next and then do the next five and then skip. Please do this. This is round number three. So I joined it when I came back around. Let's start up and we're going to do round number four. So last time it was four in a row or sorry last time it was five in a row. So this time it'll be four in a row and then skipping to jump. So let's just get it going. Wonder how many people in this video actually never knew how to do a standing double crochet. So I've been doing this for quite some time. I was doing standing single crochet without even realizing it was a thing. I was just lazy. <laughs> so I got this one and we have to get a total of four 
in a row. And then we jump. Okay, so there's my four. And we're gonna jump on over, reach on over, and start another four in a row. Please do that all the way around. This is round number four. Okay, so I already just finished the last round and now we're round number five. So last time there was four V stitches in a row. Guess what it is this time? It's three. So just starting up again. We're get, it's getting faster and faster now. And so that one plus two more gives you a total of three in a row. And then you skip, right? I like patterns like this where it's actually really obvious on what to do. So we have three, so skip and then jump on over and do the next three and so on. Please do this for round number five. So let's do the final round number six. I've already joined it and we're just going to start with your standing double or chain four or whatever you wanted. I think it's important in tutorials that you give people choices. So that's why I don't ever try to nail it too hard. So you got one and then you do the next one. So you got two in a row. And then you jump. So skip and then do the next two and then jump. I need you to do this all the way around. This is actually technically the final round and I'll meet you back here in a second. Do not fasten off uh, before you um, turn off this video and we'll be back in just a moment. So in the final round you're just going to just join to the top of the beginning and you wanna create a longer tail for here. And what we're going to do is that we're going to collect the remaining of the stitches. So just pull through. I would actually literally um, think about while I can access it, the, any of the starting strands, I would act, literally just put a tapestry needle through it and get rid of it at the same time. We do have a pom-pom. I'm going to leave the pom-pom in your capable hands on what you would like to do if you would like to do one at all. Um, so I find that people in Europe actually like pom-poms more than they do here in North America but I am a lover of pom-pom hats. So it's just one of my things. Just winter is so dreary. You might as well have something fun. So um, I have here the start of uh, the tail where we finished off and what I want to do is that I just want to collect all the stitch work. So collect all the V stitches. Just go right into the chain one spaces and you're gonna go all the way around. So ring around the V stitch, right? So I have this joy <laughs> of collecting things on the tops of the hats and then I pull it all at the same time and watch it all collapse at the same time. And it's, it'll pretty, pretty much be equal as well. So go all the way to where you started and then pull. See? And then you can decide whatever color pom-pom that you would like. Once you have it all pulled together, just go di diagonally across. And then just go like a, it's almost like a cross formation at the top. And then just go down into the hat and go to the back side of the hat or the underside. And pull that up through. And then secure it with the just a tie on this side. Now if you do a pom-pom, I am going to make a pom-pom off camera and I'll show you how I'm gonna join it. So I'll leave that in your hands. There are tutorials on how to use pom-pom makers. We have all that here on our channel if you wish. And I'm going to just have some fun. I might actually just mix all my yarns together at the same time. It says to do 100 revolutions with one strand. But what I might do is just grab all of the colors that I used except for the gray and just use my pom-pom maker. So I just have a pom-pom maker that I'll use and I can wrap them all at the same time. So all six strands at the same time and make my pom-pom. I'll leave that in your hands on what you would like to do and I'll be back in just a moment. I just wanna make sure you understand what I meant by wrapping. So I have all six strands and I'm just doing it all at the same time. So it's an equal amount of colors on my pom-pom maker. So that's what I'm doing. I'll be back in a moment. So I now have my pom-pom. So what I wanna do is come on the inside of the hat and just pop it out on the, like a crochet hook on the, in the middle section somewhere. And I used a different color to go around the pom-pom so I can actually physically see it and not accidentally cut it. <laughs> but I usually hold it by the strands anyway. So I'm gonna pull the one set of strands through so I double stranded for durability. 
and I'm gonna pull that through. I'm then gonna come completely on the opposite side of the of the circle and then grab the other strand that's leading to the pom-pom and pull that in as well. So in craft shows some people like pom-poms, some people don't. So what I highly recommend is that when you apply a pom-pom you really can't uh, you really can't uh, wash it and some people really don't like a pom-pom. There's a negative reaction to it. So what you can do is that if you put it onto the inside like so pull it right up to the surface and then on the inside here just tie it into a bow tie and what that will do is that if somebody needs to wash this hat they can just undo the bow tie and um, if somebody doesn't like uh, the pom pom they can remove it. So it's a great option, a selling feature if you want to. Just make sure that you don't leave the strands too long and therefore you can have a nice inclusive hat like so and if you wanna reduce the pom pom I like a generous pom pom and it will pull it down as well on the back side of your head. So that's it for today. It's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. This is a really cool hat and that's it for today. Have a good one. We hope to see you again real soon. Bye bye.